Hi everyone. Today, let's talk about my options portfolio. First, I will talk about some of the short-term issues facing the markets, starting with reports that Pfizer will only deliver half as many vaccines as promised. Pfizer, of course, denied this accusation, saying that they are suffering no new delays. And lastly, for news, I will quickly mention the new stimulus plan that is currently being looked at. Then I will go over my Robinhood account, as well as my Tastyworks account. And lastly, I will talk about a couple of stocks in my portfolio with a little bit more depth, such as Microsoft and CrowdStrike. If you like economic news, trading stocks and options, and making money, definitely like and subscribe. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So there were some rumors that Pfizer was only going to be able to provide half as many vaccines as originally thought, which created the potential for longer-term lockdowns and a more significant economic effect. They mention here that the cut was unexpected, but they still think they will ship 50 million doses by the end of 2020. The company mentioned that scaling up the raw material supply chain took longer than expected, and the results from the clinical trial also came back a little bit later than expected. The U.S. is likely to approve their vaccine on December 15th, with the Moderna vaccine being approved the following week. There continue to be concerns about the sub-zero shipping requirements for the Pfizer vaccine because they need to be kept in a deep freeze condition at minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit for Pfizer and minus 4 degrees for Moderna. Since then, Pfizer has denied any further delays in their vaccine production, sticking to their 50 million dose estimate. As the result of the announcement, Pfizer shares fell 2% and Moderna shares jumped 10%. The 50 million doses is expected to be enough for the 21 million healthcare workers and 3 million nursing home residents. All of this is to say that the Rona is coming to a conclusion in the eyes of the markets, and the vaccine, as well as a fast and effective distribution, is all the way priced in. And I feel like if there's any changes to this narrative, we may see a price decline. Next up, affecting the markets, Congress is considering another stimulus plan. There is bipartisan support for a $908 billion economic relief package that continues to gain support, as well as President-elect Joe Biden. This bill puts it somewhere between the House and the Senate's bills, between $500 billion and $2.2 trillion from the House. There's certainly some details that need to be worked out, like will there be direct payments to individuals and which individuals would qualify for said payments, but the markets are viewing this as another $1 trillion injection of cash, and there will certainly be a fight for the profits to be made off of that large injection of cash. Again, this is another thing that I see being priced into the markets, and if there are any changes to this narrative, I think we could see some downward pressure. Moving on to my Robinhood portfolio, you can see I'm still doing pretty well at 7.88% over the past month, despite a pretty good drop here at the beginning of November. It's been basically straight up from there, but the overall market's been basically straight up as well, so it's pretty hard to lose money in that kind of a market. Looking at my positions for this portfolio, I have Disney here. Stock has been rallying and there's not a lot of credit left in this contract. I may close it and wait for a down day, to reopen a contract in Disney, but for now I will be looking to exit this contract once it gets a little bit less in credit. Looking at Palantir, I'm long-term bullish this stock, and the volatility is also very high here, and I plan to roll out this contract if the credit gets too low or if we get a good down day. Apple, I did roll out this contract to 15 January, as well as AMD and Yeti. Yeti had a down day, so I did open up this contract in Yeti, and AMD has been a staple and has rallied pretty significantly in the last few days. There's not a ton of credit left in this contract, and I will look to exit this if it continues to rally. Moving on to my Tastyworks account. First up, I have Beyond Meat. This has been a pretty bullish position for me, and we're getting pretty close to that 21 days till expiration, and I'm over 50% profit on this, so I may look to close this here in the next week, or roll it out to a further expiration if we get a pretty good down day. Looking at CrowdStrike, they announced earnings and they rallied pretty significantly after earnings. And I did roll up this position because it did have such a strong earnings report as well as a very strong rally. And I'll talk about the charts on this a little bit later. Looking at Facebook, again, another pretty strong performer. I did roll this out to January a little bit early. The stock was down, but not very much. 
And I could have waited a little bit longer, but either way, I still got a pretty good credit here at $3.79. Moving on to Microsoft, this is my closest to the money position right now, and it is in a pretty good profit. I did roll this out as well this last week because the stock did have a pretty good dip and then basically rallied from there, which is why you see so much profit here, even with 40 days left to expiration. Moving on to Netflix, this stock did rally pretty well. And it's already at $30 profit, even though this is a credit spread out to 15 January. I do have a pretty different position here with a put and a call sold, as well as a further out of the money call sold. So basically I'm long this stock at $23 per share, out to $28 per share, where I think it is a pretty good sell. This was a very short term position, so I will be looking to close this before expiration this week. But I think we have a little bit more rally in Palantir this week. Moving on to Peloton, again, another stock that had a little bit of a down week. So I rolled this position out because it was already in a profit and it rallied a little bit since the time that I rolled it and it's already in a little bit more of a profit. The Qs, this is an iron condor just to balance out my deltas here. And you can see it's in a little bit of a losing position, but that's all right considering how well my other positions are doing right now. And then Snapchat also doing very well, already over 50% profit and we're down to 25 days to expiration. So I probably will close this position or look for a day to roll out. Simon Property Group, another stock that's been doing very well. This goes 40 days to expiration, but it's already at the vast majority of its profits. So I may roll it up since there's so much time to expiration and the stock is so high, but I still might wait for a little bit of a down day to do it. And then I have some short-term puts as well as a long-term put credit spread. Both of these are doing very well and I will look to roll out this credit spread because it is getting pretty close to that 21 days to expiration, which is where I tend to roll out to around 45 days to expiration. Moving on to Microsoft. I am very bullish on Microsoft long-term and you can see the 100 day moving average here has been acting as support, which is currently right around that 210, the 211 to $212 per share. And you can see the stock was kind of in a triangle pattern here and it continues to wedge in here, but I'm still pretty bullish and I think this will either break out to the upside. And if we do see some downward pressure, I have no issues rolling this put position out in time until I am right, because I'm confident that Microsoft will be a strong company going forward. And this thesis is mostly based on Azure, which is their cloud computing software. As I mentioned before, my current position is the $210 puts, and I did sell those naked on margin. So I had to put up around $4,400 to receive a $779 credit. So my current cost basis is right around $203 per share. Moving on to CrowdStrike. For some reason, my tasty work charts could not pull up CrowdStrike price action right now. So I moved over to Yahoo Finance and you can see I have the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average the same way I have it set up on Tastyworks. But for CrowdStrike here, you can see the stock has been rallying aggressively since April. The stock was down in the $50 price range in April and rallied all the way up to $115 per share where it was a little bit choppy in here. And then it broke up to $140 per share. I did think this was a little bit overpriced, but then it rallied right back up to that stock price. We did get a little bit of downward momentum here where I did sell some puts. And then moving in here, we can see we had a couple of down days right before earnings where I did sell a contract, making me neutral to bullish here going into earnings. And then it popped up because they had unexpected profits and it's been able to maintain that going forward. If you don't have a position already on for CrowdStrike, the stock is at all time highs. So be aware of that if you want to put in a, a put position. But I am very long term bullish on the endpoint security for cloud computing that CrowdStrike provides. And they are definitely an industry leader currently and don't face a huge amount of opposition quite yet. This is not to say that they will never face any opposition, but this has been a very profitable stock for me. And it's definitely something that I will keep on my watch list going forward. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the economic news. Will the vaccine kill the Rona once and for all? And will the stimulus be approved? And will almost $1 trillion go out into the economy, which seems to be doing pretty well given the circumstances? Also, let me know if you have any questions about any of the stocks that I'm trading or any specific positions I mentioned in this video, or if there's any stocks that I should be talking about, definitely put those down in the comment section as well. If you got any value out of this video, definitely like and subscribe. Of course, this is not financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. 
and have a great day.